I decided to pursue a career in law because it gives me an opportunity to help people. When a client chooses us to represent them, they're entrusting us with a huge responsibility. It's our goal to exceed their expectations with our personalized service and to help them to achieve the best possible recovery to compensate them for their injuries. That's where we come in. We come in and we solve that problem for them and uh, really set them on the right track in order to try and get back to what their life was like before the accident happened. For them. And uh, really set them on the right track in order to try and get back to what their life was like before the accident happened. For them. Man, what's going on, folks? What is going on? So I had to hit the button again so we could redo the thing. Because <laughs> it was so quiet, I don't know how to act. Hey, y'all, listen, folks, thank y'all for welcome. Let me try this in English. So welcome to the Big Bone Yard, and thank y'all for being here. Apparently, I've been missing for a minute. I've been MIA. Uh, folks been telling me, man, where you been, man? Where you been, man? Anyway. So here's where we are. Uh, we're back here at the Big Bone Yard, and tonight is definitely going to be uh, a great night because we're joined by some fantastic folks. Uh, so, of course, you got myself, uh, the hostess with the most, this doggone Big Bone One Percenter, and as per always, Mr. Dagon Archbishop in the motherfucking house. It's been a minute since you've been doing it. Hey, brother. Uh, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? All right. That's what's up. I'll tell you what, uh, we was talking about this a little while ago. When you asked that question, how's everybody doing? There's two sus kind of suspected, uh, kind of suspect individuals. I'm, I'm just teasing. No, hey, look, we got uh, Tate from Abate. Uh, Tate, for those of y'all don't know, uh, very impressive young man. He is the uh, president of the Lake County chapter of Abate, the largest Abate chapter in the entire state of Florida. But Tate, welcome to the show, man. <laughs> Always a pleasure, always a pleasure. And you know how they say that thing about saving the best for last? We was going to do that, but instead we got Black Dragon. But no, <laughs> hey, real talk, uh, for those of y'all, the man that does not need an introduction, but going to get one anyway, Black Dragon, sir, welcome to the Big Bone Yard, and thank you for being here. <laughs> you know, little Russian rage music. A little Russian rave, a little Russian rave. All right, I think it, I think it, okay. Hey, and we see all the folks. Hey, Mike Ball, uh, it's good to see you, bro. Good to see you. So, Douche Canoe, uh, Bolo. All right, all right, folks. All right, that's what's up. All right, there you go. Hey, everybody sliding through. It's good to see y'all. So, I gotta, you know, because it's been a minute, I gotta, I gotta be nosy and play catch up. So, AB, for old time's sake, Old time, just a couple of weeks ago, man. How you been, man? How was your weekend? How was your past week or two, man? It's been a minute. How you been? Uh, yeah, I know, right? I know, right? We've been on vacation a little bit. You know, man, we've been hitting the outside, but not over here. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, 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 life, life been getting in the way, man. Yeah, man. Everything been good, man. You know what I mean? Uh, between, uh, let me see, let me see what we got. We got work, then, uh, then we doing the movie. We've been working on that. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Then we've been hitting hitting the domino effect. So we've been, I mean, so we've been moving around a little bit. And plus, we've been traveling a little bit too. So, you yeah, know what I mean? Facts. We've quite a bit. Thanks. And matter of fact, I, we're doing a lot. We're doing a lot. Uh, that thing my daughter be talking about, uh, what's that thing she says? Dad, you, you're just doing too much. You're just doing too much. I'm like, why don't you go get a job? Where well, she got a job, but you know. <laughs> but no, man, but yeah, that, that movie, that's very exciting. We're doing, we're in a movie uh, called uh, Riding Dirty. And uh, it's it's pretty exciting, man. I'm I got my um my T what do they call it? I'm the TD, the technical director. I'm doing a a, a doggone uh, uh damn black dragon kind of a thing. You know what I mean? This movie, I don't. It's not gonna be biker boys. It's gonna be an exciting movie, but it don't have the biker boys budget. Let's just say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm doing like the uh, black dragon light. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Black Dragon Light. That, that was DreamWorks. DreamWorks Light. <laughs> Dream, DreamWorks Light, yeah. <laughs> so you're like Diet Dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, gets you skin. ain't quite uh, Dragon. Black Dragon <laughs> didn't have no budget either. <laughs> so, so I threw in that Get Skinny. See, that, that's like a little tagline. Y'all didn't catch that. But, yo, but, man, how you been, Black Dragon? No, for real, man. How you been? Man, God has um, definitely been good to me. Um, huh. Um, I, I've been so blessed to be able to uh, do everything I've wanted to do. I just got 
finished with uh, the first of its kind ever written uh, in the world, the Social Club's Bible. Yeah. <laughs> revival of the revival of the Social Club, uh, the Women's Social Club's movement, uh, Lifting as We Climb. Now, this book I wrote to be able to explain to any female in a women's social club. So on the black biker set, there's a thing called social clubs that aren't really, you won't find them on any other sets really. Um, and they are clubs of nothing but women who wear colors and have presidents and vice presidents and sergeant at arms. And they, they move almost like we move uh, in MCs. And they are really like, like uh, I would call them support antennas of, of the MCs. They, um, uh, they, they pair up with a male, social, a male motorcycle club and they, um, they support us in everything we do. They do all kinds of charity work and all these kinds of things, but they are part and parcel to the motorcycle club set because they are, they are nestled in among us. They have to get a, approved, they have to be sanctioned, get blessings and different, they're handled a little bit differently in different parts of the United States, but they are part and parcel in the African-American culture of biking in motorcycle clubs. Uh, many of them, right. when they come onto the set, they have no idea about MC protocol, social club protocol, or any of that. So I wrote this book to address that, first of all, to teach them the history of social clubs. Black women's social clubs started during the slave days to uh, help to uh, effect the social construct. They were anti, they had anti-lynching campaigns, anti-slavery campaigns. They, they had uh, uh, suffrage, which was women's rights. They were uh, against alcoholism, uh, against alcohol. They, all this stuff that they did that a lot of folks that join social clubs today have no idea of this enormous history. Wait a minute, uh, let me jump in. Did you just say, because I'm one of them thought I knew everything. Are you saying that social clubs started during slavery days? Social clubs started during slavery days. Brother, that, that's <laughs> wow. wow. All and right. Here's, Damn. You, here's you some pictures. For those of y'all that can't read, it has pictures. <laughs> wow. Right. Here's you some pictures of social clubs uh, from the 1800s, from the 17, uh, I don't know if the 1700s, but. Uh, uh, this one's 1900, uh, 1915, 1835, 1858. Yeah. Women's social clubs started back in the slave days. Wow. You All might right. not know this, but uh, 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 Harriet Tubman, Mother Moses herself, was a social club woman. Oh, damn. Yeah. So these women set up these uh, amazing uh, uh, networks to do everything from help free slaves to uh, take blankets to, to starving and freezing slave children, feeding programs. They even had education programs where they taught uh, women how to use uh, the serving table and manage the, uh, uh, manage the shifaroo. You remember when your grandmother, everybody's grandmother had a, uh, I think they were called shifaroos back in my day, those uh, China cabinets with all the yeah, nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So uh, they, they, uh, if you knew how to manage that China cabinet, you could actually serve in the big house rather than serving uh, uh, out in, in the in the field. So you could up up your station in life. And believe it or not, a lot of these women in the beginning, these were wealthy women, black women who were not slaves, that were wealthy and living in in the upper class, remembering, uh, not necessarily remembering, but not not failing to not not uh, overlooking. Their sisters that weren't doing so well. Like not everybody was a slave. There were some rich black right. women that were doing well, and they put together these programs to take care of women who weren't doing well. So and, yeah. No, I was gonna say I know about um, what do you call it? Eastern stars and stuff like that. So in my head, I, I figured eh, something like that. I mean, as far as the history of it, I never delved into it until. Yeah, that, that's no, that's so, my. So we, we didn't we didn't talk about. Uh, uh, the the uh, Masonic clubs at all uh, in this book. Uh, what we talked about was the uh, the uh, social clubs of the day that came from the churches. 
They came from uh, the the uh, those wealthy women, as I was telling you about. They yeah. came from the the, uh, and then gradually uh, it got down to to more to where the women were not as wealthy. Uh, they weren't much better off than the women that were in the that were the slaves. And they were sometimes would risk their own freedom to go help these women out, uh, to help these. To help and and listen, man. They they the first black press. Ida B. Wells was uh, one of the yeah. first uh, ladies out there that you might hear of. Uh, all of these 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 incredible women, uh, Margaret Mur Murray Washington. Uh, uh, all these were social club women, and so my point was to show social club women that way before there was a motorcycle set social club. Social clubs were out there doing. They were called women's clubs within the okay, park. Okay. Women's clubs. They were out there, and they started first. Um, they uh, they started. Uh, they they hit America as a movement, in what was known as the Progressive Era, and this is a, a, an idea that came over from Europe that in order for everybody to do well as a country, you had to get rid of slavery. You had to get rid of uh, capitalism. Uh, uh, you had to get rid of uh, this idea that. Uh, you, you had to empower uh, unions and stuff like this. This was yeah, known yeah. as the progressive movement. And you had all of these uh, women's social clubs, especially huge white women's social clubs that came in. Black women thought they would be included in this because, you know, of all the things yeah. they espoused it. And then the uh, white women's social clubs got involved, and that's when black women had to break out and do their own social clubs because then race became a factor. Was that during, the like, the suffrage movement? This was before the suffrage movement, but they were, the part, movement. they were part of the suffrage movement. They were part yeah, of uh, the school boards movement. They were part of uh, the, uh, what was the alcohol stuff? Uh, prohibition. Uh, prohibition. They were part of prohibition. This th it was just amazing what these sisters were doing. And my point in the book was, if you didn't know about that, it would be very easy for you to get into a motorcycle club and let somebody call you a, a groupie. Uh, right. and let somebody You've treat you whole time. In, in such a way. Uh, but And let a motorcycle club make you think something like uh, you guys weren't never allowed to start up or anything like that before motorcycle clubs came. And social clubs have been out there doing the same things today that they were doing back then. War, uh, giving clothes and toys and things to children, feeding folks, warming folks, clothing folks, housing folks. Uh, uh, part of um, moving in politics. The, these ladies, they had printing presses and stuff that were burned down because every time a black man was getting, uh, or, a, or a black man or woman was getting lynched, they would write about it in these papers. It was crazy. So I got to tell you, uh, I'm a little concerned with what you said because Tate now has to follow that when I ask him, so Tate, what you been doing? <laughs> Not nearly as much as all y'all. What the Damn. hell? <laughs> wow. well, there, there was a week there I thought I was dying, but uh, no, nah, I was sick for about a week. But other than that, same old BS that we all deal with. I mean, uh, we just hit uh, Mill Vets annual this weekend, getting ready to ride to Tallahassee second week of February. Meetings after meetings after meetings after meetings after meetings. I think I'm in more meetings than CEOs of some of these million dollar companies. Yeah, well, you're also a better person than most of them <laughs> mofos. I, I damn sure don't get their bank check. That's Man, for sure. <laughs> I hear you. Well, I'll tell you what, with me, uh, what I did, I don't know if y'all can tell, but I got some, uh, finally, uh, some, some new damn spectacles because, uh, I had never, so uh, just a couple of months ago, I went to the first uh, real eye doctor, like forever. Uh, and uh, apparently I'm blind as shit, uh, which they, they have the official, uh, what do you call it? The ofis, official diagnosis of what I am is blind as shit. That's what they actually wrote in the VA paperwork. It says blind as shit. Uh, so I got some glasses. They got these bad boys in the mail. And uh Yo, I, I had no idea how blind the fuck I was until I put these shits on. I'm like, damn, is this how stuff is supposed to look ordinarily? I'm, I mean, see how blew my, blew my damn mind. Let's see how long you actually wear them for. Yeah, I've been trying to, you know, <laughs> you, you got to get used to them and that whole thing. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it takes a little bit getting used to. But, um, but, you know, still been doing the damn thing. And, um, 
and but yeah we got some cool stuff coming up uh we've been working on that movie uh the coc the a bait the you know just a lot of different stuff but it's it's all been good stuff man and um which really has a lot to do with uh, uh tonight's show uh because i know all of us in our in our different facets we're really involved with all of this mc stuff in the mc community which um you know what let me jump in there with both feet right quick and tell you so if uh, y'all didn't notice the um, the, the description of the tonight's show, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read this thing like I'll be doing all the time. But um, so here's what it says. It goes, do you still get that? Do you still feel that rush of pride and excitement every time you put on your club colors? You know, you put on your rags, put on your vest. Does it still feel that way? You know? So, yeah, me too, because I, I, I still do. But this is probably because your MC has been around for, for a time. And you're hoping it's going to be around for many years to come. So how do you stay relevant to your set and to the community at large? It's like, how do you make sure that your club's legacy lives on? You know, and one way to do that is by making more friends than enemies. Sometimes seems a little hard, but making more friends than enemies. So uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about just how to do that. We're going to find out a few ways to do that, probably in some in a, with a couple of things that you might not have really associated with that. Like, how do you keep your club relevant and a strong legacy and going on for on and on and on and on? And everybody here tonight actually has something to contribute to this conversation where it actually applies to them in a big way. But having said that, my first thought was about the community of it. You know, like, so when we're talking about motorcycle clubs, we have to include MROs, you know, motorcycle rights organizations in that conversation because these are still organizations of bikers together. And all of these different organizations, whether it's an MC, a RC, a MRO, or whatever alphabet you want to put behind it, uh, they're organized and they're doing stuff. A lot of times they're doing stuff individually. A lot of times they have some sort of a council or a coalition. There are lots of individual coalitions throughout the state of Florida, Georgia, and every other damn state, right? But what if they could kind of figure some stuff out and this coalition and that council could kind of get on the same page? And that's how you make your MC bulletproof. That's how you're going to win in 2024, which was the topic of tonight's show. But um, uh, I think we want to get started on, um, in fact, since we got you here, uh, Tate, uh, we're going to start about ABATE. Uh, if you don't mind, sir, take, could you tell us a little bit about what ABATE is? ABATE is... And why we should give a fuck? Well, yeah. Well, there's that. Um, ABATE in the state of Florida is the only MRO. Um, it is nationwide. No, all the states aren't combined under a nation. But hopefully, eventually, in the future, we can get that accomplished. Um, ABATE is the group that's out there fighting legislator for everybody that throws their leg over a saddle. Um, that's, I mean, the gist of it for the most part. For the longest, there was people that didn't want clubs in ABATE. A lot of clubs, in, at least in my area, don't want to join. Oh, that that's not a club. That's against our bylaw. It shouldn't be, in, in my opinion, it shouldn't be against anybody's bylaws. Because we're the ones out there fighting for the rights of all of us, whether you're a club, an MRO, uh, a writing group, any of that. We're the ones that are feet on the ground in Tallahassee, as far as Florida goes, feet on the ground in Tallahassee. What does um, that mean, though? Feet on the ground in Tallahassee. What does that mean? If you're in Colorado, what does that mean? Um, we are in our state capital once a year. Um talking to our legislators lobbying for different rule uh different laws um for the longest florida had a helmet law that said everybody had to wear a helmet we went through and we fought that to make it to where as long as you are over the age of 18 and you own your motorcycle as long as you have financial responsibility you are allowed to ride without a helmet um we also lobbied for the texting and driving law, um, which still is not – most cops don't enforce it, but at least it's on the books, and we can try to push to get it stricter. But you're not allowed to have any um, cell phones, computers, anything like that in your hands while you're going down the road. Reason being, I mean – 
10 seconds, you know, two seconds with your eyes off the road, one of us are hit and killed. Um, the law we're pro pushing for this year is a stricter penalties law. A lot of people don't realize in the state of Florida, as long as you are not intoxicated, you hit and kill a motorcyclist, a $166 fine. However, if I hit and kill you in my truck and you're in a vehicle, it's vehicular manslaughter, regardless of if I'm intoxicated or not. So we're pushing for stiffer penalties for that. Um, but that's what we do. I mean, everybody, in my opinion, should support their local abate chapter, no matter what state they're in, because they're the foot soldiers that are fighting for your rights, for the freedom of the road, to be able to live our lifestyle, to be able to ride. You know, a lot of states do want you to wear a helmet. But if you had a strong abate movement, they could fight that. Um, well, you know, I'll share one thing, um, cause I'm a, you know, full disclosure, I'm, I'm a member and a, and an officer in a ABATE chapter here in Florida. And, um, one thing that I love about ABATE from way back when is, uh, one, of course the helmet law and a number of other things, they had all kinds of laws that kept popping up over, over the past 20 years. Like, uh, if you take off too fast from a red light, even if you don't, uh, break the speed, uh, the speed limit you'd get a ticket for excessive yep. acceleration. And yep. that was a $250 ticket. And if you if your front wheel or your back wheel left the, uh, left the pavement in excess of two inches, that was considered a wheelie. Yep. And that was a 250. The first fine was 250. Then it was 500. Then it was a thousand and then it was your license. <laughs> yeah. Then you take your license. And the thing is, is that, a cop could say, yeah, I saw it, whether you, whether it happened or not. Or, But long story short, these are the sort of laws that ABATE got abolished. They, they got those things thrown out. The other thing was about, I guess, 11 or 12 years ago now, ABATE got a bunch of money. Uh, well, at the time, it was considered a bunch of money for motorcycle safety and awareness. And they actually used that money in a lot of creative ways to let people become aware of motorcyclists on the road and, you know, basically to stop killing us and stuff. And it was the first time in the history of the state of Florida that the that motorcycle deaths and injuries plummeted. They went oh, yeah. down and they stayed down the entire time that Abate had and managed that money. And then, of course, DMV, you know, the uh, DMV found out about it. Uh, they got the money every year since up until here recently. They got the money every every year since. And they threw that money in the general fund and didn't do a thing for bikers at all. Now, they and, figured pizza parties are more important. Oh, yeah. Pizza parties or just, you know, paying extra staff, whatever. Uh, and the thing is uh, about that, uh, them throwing that money in the general fund, it, it didn't do anything for bikers. And of course, uh, the, the statistics went up, not in our favor. It was pretty bad. Uh, but finally, uh, last year, we were able to, ABATE was able to uh, get a new deal where when you pay your registration for your motorcycle in Florida, well, what is it? $2 of that? It used to be about $2 and 50 cents. Yeah. So now it's $2 and 50 cents. Every time you pay your registration on your motorcycle, $2 and 50 cents of that goes towards motorcycle safety and awareness. And ABATE, along with two other organizations, were able to get some of that money. And now hopefully we're going to do the right thing with the money and hopefully we'll get the same exact result. But that's the kind of stuff that ABATE is doing. They've got people who are fighting for the rights of motorcyclists even when you don't know about it. So, so Tate, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're doing what you're doing. And we're going to come back to you in just a little bit. Not a problem. So ABATE is a, so ABATE's one of those organizations. If you're a club member and you're thinking, I can't join ABATE and be in my club. Yeah, you can. Cause it's an MRO. It's a social organization. And the other thing is this, you join ABATE, you get $4,000 worth of AD and D accidental death insurance. It's 20 bucks for the whole year, which is, just well, in the state of Florida. Florida. Yeah, in the state of Florida, it's 20 bucks for the whole year. So that's not a whole lot of money at all. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, so we're going to come back to, and talk about Abate uh, here in just a little bit. Next thing is the COC as it relates to motorcycle clubs. Every state in the United States, or well, damn near, damn near. I've actually got a list of all the states. Yeah, go ahead, BD. Well, I, before we left Abate, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Um, yeah. For folks, uh, one thing that's cool about my cool new book is that for <laughs> everybody, that all the women out there, we have put the the uh, meanings of all this stuff so that uh -oh. MRO, you said it's an MRO. Well, it's right here. What is an MRO? Groups that advocate for the rights and interests of motorcyclists. They work to protect the rights of riders, promote motorcycle safety, 
and influence legislation and policies that affect motorcycling. So here are the characteristics of all these groups. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about is um, uh, something I didn't really quite understand. What is the actual definition of abate? So originally, years back when it started in California by Lou Kimsey, it was uh, a brotherhood against totalitarian enactments. More recently, we've moved to a more politically correct acronym because we're going towards the whole safety idea. It's American bikers aiming towards education. I got it all. Ah, Okay. <laughs> that's uh, that's really cool because you know you say abate and all that, but people don't know what it means and what it stands for, and 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 how does an MRO help you? What does it is it that an MRO does? People say MRO, but it's a motorcycle rights organization, and what you guys do is fight for our rights, and that's why people should join because you guys fight for our rights. You do it through legislation, through PACs, through through uh, litigation, you're you're there at the forefront of everything, and there are other organizations that he told me he was going to talk about tonight. But it's important that folks know what a bait is and and why should you be able? To, why would you want to join a, a bait and your own club? Why would you want to be in both? And that's because every stupid thing uh, or license or anything, and this has been going on since the twenties. Uh, when the American Motorcyclists Association came into a being, it's been going yeah. on since the since the since the 1924 or, or when when they started when motorcycles started becoming a thing, and they started doing things like making motorcycles have license plates and and fining motorcycles. There's been motorcycle only checkpoints and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Twenty since the twenty. Yeah. We've dealt with that in Florida a lot. I mean that that's a fight. Oh, yeah. that, it, so it that's keeps what you got up every two years. So in, in keeping with how do we make our motorcycle club stronger, how do we make our motorcycle clubs bulletproof in 2024, which is the, the context of, of this show, uh, bringing that all around is one of the things that you want to be able to do is, is strengthen our laws. And, and by doing that, these organizations that we call MROs, these organ, MRO organizations, we have to support you guys, you MRO organizations, with our money, with our time, with our uh, uh, volunteerism, uh, it, it, and and at the very least, twenty dollars a year. Uh, if enough oh, yeah. of us put that in, yeah. we have a strong pack, a strong organization, a strong legislative branch, branch that is fighting for the rights of us. Okay. And I, I yield my time to the gentleman. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Miss Maxine Waters. <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm reclaiming my time. Hey, I'm um, reclaiming my time. <laughs> hey, uh, soldier, soldier from Hard Knocks just asked, "How does one become a member of Abate?" And uh, soldier, get at me. I, I will get you squared away. I got an app with your name on it, and um, I'll have one for everybody in your in your club. A lot of the a lot of the clubs, at least in in this area, a lot of the clubs join as a club. Yep. And no kidding, what a lot of the clubs will do is they'll make the beneficiary because you get insurance with that with that twenty bucks you get insurance. So the club will pay for every member's uh, membership in Abate, and they make the the club the beneficiary. So God forbid something happens to you, you lose your pinky toe or or fall down, go boom, you know, in a bad way or something. Uh, the the club Can has take care of you. to take care of you. Uh, so that's just, but you know. Get at me, man. Um, uh, get get at me uh, after the show or tomorrow, or something. And I'll I'll get y'all squared away. Cause hey, it's, and it's anybody in any state, I got Abate contacts in just about every state that we have an Abate. They can get at me if they're in a different state, and I'll get them in touch with somebody. Good, 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 good. And um, one of the things that uh, that Abate does, uh, they're really uh, in tune to education, and which leads me to the, the one of the next things about making your club bulletproof. If you're an MC and you're not in the COC in your local area, you should be. COC, depending on what state, is either going to be the Council of Clubs or the Confederation of Clubs. In some areas, uh, you're already going to know about it because you can't stand up as a club without going through the COC. In other, in other states, it's a little bit different. Either or, you should get involved with the COC. I'm going to tell you why in a second. But one of the things that I know they're doing in North Carolina, they've been doing it for years in North Carolina, is the COC was able to get together with a good number of folks and they got, uh, speaking of politics, they were able to put it into the law in North Carolina that they teach 
motorcycle safety and awareness in high school. So when kids are taking their driving course, they have a whole section about motorcycles, like a whole section. You can even, as a high school kid, get a motorcycle license and you can learn to ride the motorcycle in high school, the same way you used to have driver's ed. Well, in North Carolina, they got driver's ed that includes motorcycles. We'll so see. you're gonna learn all of this stuff. And if you look at on a per capita basis, uh, since North Carolina has been doing that, the, their uh, frequency of motorcycle accidents and so forth is one of the lowest in the United States. But they're teaching these kids about this stuff way early. You know, like our kids in uh, some of these states, we're playing punch buggy, punch you in the arm because they just saw a Volkswagen in North Carolina. Boom, that's a Harley, bitch. <laughs> you know, they got they got a different thing going on. You know, North Carolina is moving different. But that's because the COC. Thanks, Gabby. Tell her uh, I'm online. Yeah, but in the COC in North Carolina and other states are doing really good things. But the COC, uh, here's a few reasons as to why you want. Now, the COC is not an MRO. It's a council of clubs. Um, typically, you know, you don't always see your, your diamond clubs, you know, the dominant clubs doing a whole lot of, you know, interaction with uh, other folks on some of the local councils. But where you do see them is you see them in the COC because that's where they go. That's where they get together. The first COCs was, in fact, all dominant clubs um, many, many years ago. Uh, we're talking all those clubs that you didn't seen on some documentary on Gangland or something. Uh, no connection. I'm just saying they got a documentary or two. But, uh, but to give you an idea, so with the COC, first of all, there's lawyers. If you know a biker who's ever gotten in any kind of anything where they needed a lawyer, guess what? In the COC, COC has lawyers. They even have a group called AIM. Uh, AIM is a group of attorneys who specialize in anything related to bikers. It doesn't matter whether it's criminal, traffic, civil. If it's a biker that's involved, they have an AIM network of attorneys throughout the United States, you can call one phone number, boom, and they're going to put you in touch with your local expert on that subject in your area. And a lot of times they're going to pay for it. Um, there's lobbyists involved, politicians involved. Um, they, the, the National Sport Bike Association is involved. Christian Unity uh, nationally is involved. They even have a AIM Flyers program. BD, do you know about the Flyer program? So what that is, is this, if you're a motorcycle club and you're in the COC, you know, a lot of times you get ready to have an event party or something like that. And what do you do? You make flyers, you hand them out, right? So those things cost money. If you're a club and you're in AIM and you got, you're getting ready to have some sort of an event. Well, the, the, uh, the doggone, um, uh, the, the COC or excuse me, the, uh, the national version of the COC income will give you $250. You don't have to pay it back. It's $250 to help your event because you're a member of ACOC somewhere. And that's a, that's a lot of flyers. Yeah, that's a lot. Of oh, flyers. yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of times it's more than just, you know, they, they always say it's for flyers, but you could use it for any number of things related to uh, helping to promote your event because your club is a member of the COC. So the COC uh, on, the, on the, the local level, on the state level, uh, the Confederation of Clubs is set in place to provide protection for motorcyclists and to promote the freedom of motorcycle clubs. Uh, the, aim the aim of the organization is to discourage discrimination towards motorcyclists. So the COC spend a lot of time, energy, and effort in making sure that, uh, that the, uh, what do they call it, the uh, uh, profiling, you know, the way that the cops profile against you. Um, in some states, it's real bad. In Texas, it's really bad. Me and, oh, yeah. me and uh, Archbishop talked about this a hundred times. Uh, like Texas, we talk about Australia and some of these other countries, but it's going on right here. And so the COC, big part of what they do is to squash that BS. So there's that. Um, and there's, uh, if anybody wants to know, if you're in a different state and need to know about your COC, get at me. Got a, a very extensive list of contacts for all over the country so you can get your club involved in the COC in your area. If you're not already, you need to be. 2024, we suppose that, you know, it's time to level up a little something. It's time to level up. And- um, Hey, Bo, did you yes, hear all they was talking about, um, talking about Australia, Ben and Ben, you brought that up. Yeah. You know, they get, you know, they cracking down even more in what? Australia. <laughs> to what they were, How the hell can they get worse? Like if you, if you Damn. were, 
if you were a one percenter, which they call bikies, that's what yeah. they call percenters. So if you own a business, they shutting your business down. If a one percenter owns a business in Australia, they are shutting it down. They was sound like some illegal shit. <laughs> you were also locking people up, and they were locked up for six months or more, and didn't even have a charge filed against them. Damn, they doing all kind of stuff over in Australia, man. You know, see, but why does why do we need to pay attention to what's going on in Australia? Because if you remember, there's some of the stuff that went on in Australia first. Mm-hmm. After then, it started in Canada. Yep. And Canada started getting strict about it. So then once it's once it gets it's where it's supposed to be up in Canada, you know everything kind of trickles down. Yeah. You know, so, um reason why I brought that up is because Ooh. it's going on in other spots. We're next. It's just yep. a matter of time. Oh yeah. Texas and dude, look, that's one of them hitting it out of the park type joints because and remember, you and I spoke about that almost all of last year. Now they damn sure leveled up, <laughs> taking your business. But here's the thing. And uh, so for those of y'all that don't know, I'm telling you, me and Archbishop talked about this pretty much the entirety of last year. And we talked about Texas. And in, what they're doing in Texas, of course, you can't even, if you got on your rag, your, your colors, and you're riding from point A to point B, they pull you over and you are carrying your legally licensed firearm. And the police know about it because they're going to ask you and legally you're supposed to tell them if they ask you and you say, well, yes, officer, I am carrying my legally licensed firearm in my tour pack or on my person, you know, whatever it is. Guess what? You're going to jail. You're going to jail because that's a felony in Florida because you're, there's no such thing according to or excuse me, uh, in Texas, because in Texas, there's no such thing as a motorcycle club. There's motorcycle gangs and then there's people that drive cars. <laughs> that's it. That's and bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so that they also it's Texas. <laughs> doing too. They done added they added this on to the Patriot Act. And oh damn. You know, you know how they've been they've been getting people and they've been hitting them with all these ridiculous charges. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Getting them for being uh domestic terrorists and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. So this this is what they threw in to that, which a lot of people are not gonna know this. If you were in the military at any given point in time in your life, you can be charged as being a domestic terrorist. So wait, 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 let me see. So you're in the military and you're in a club. Is that what you're saying? You're saying no. no, If you was ever, ever in the military, right, and you get charged with anything dealing with dealing club related. You will get the charge of being a domestic terrorist, Ooh. and the actual the actual penalty if you are convicted for a convicted of as a uh, domestic terrorist is life. What? Oh. Yeah. Well, thanks, no. thanks for serving your country, but uh, fuck you. Yeah. That's what yeah. that is. Yeah. Let's go ahead and, and <laughs> lock your ass up for the rest of your damn natural born days. You made it out. Now you're going to prison. Yep. Yeah. See, okay. I, when I when I was when they was telling me about it, I was thinking that it was like okay. So if I was in the service and something happened, then this is what they were. They, they're like, no, 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 no. And I'm gonna tell you, this was a full bird colonel that told me this. Wow. If you get caught at any given time dealing with anything dealing with motorcycles, you get arrested for that, and they and they get you for being a domestic terrorist. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you did too much in the military or 20 mm-hmm. years. Man, you go Biker, News, Biker News Canada is saying that three or more laws passed in Canada. His whole club up there just got hit with it. It sucks. And mm-hmm. uh, Mike Ball uh, Mike Ball just said, no, in Texas, you are required to report your gun in. That's, that's what I said earlier. In Texas, you are rep- if, if they ask, do you have a firearm, you have to tell them. Uh, because now that's not in every state that is in Texas. If they ask you, if they pull you over, they ask, do you have a firearm? You're supposed to tell them. Problem is that's a huge catch 22, which the lawyers in Texas, uh, like all of the, the, the abate and the COC lawyers are working overtime with this one since last year, uh, actually since the pretty much the entirety of last year, trying to have the, these laws reconsidered, repealed or something, because it's just incredibly unconstitutional. 
And remember, Texas is supposed to be a Second Amendment state. But with what you're talking about, Archbishop, oh, they're taking it to a whole entire other level. I mean, now they're going after American patriots that serve their country, threatening them with life. Man, it's all kind of stuff that's going on right now that's that's been that's been sleep has been slipping between the two cracks. Ain't nobody really been paying attention. You know what I mean? And yeah. and you think you know, like you call it the three D's: desertion, distinction, and the, and and division. So as long as they can do those three things right there and keep you distracted and in this direction, that everything is <laughs> right beside you going on and you have no idea that this stuff even taking place. You remember Bone when we was looking up when they were talking about that special police force over in Georgia and South Carolina? Yep. Yep. You know, nobody knew about that. Now they bought an article up about it, but how big was the article? The article was about about this yeah. big and we brought it up one time. It's a snippet. <laughs> you missed it. Yep. You know, but they got that set up to where they have zero jurisdiction. They can run around and do whatever they want to do. And if you and if they're investigating you or they pick you up and you go back and tell that they was the ones that picked you up, then you can't get legal representation. Wow. Man. All kinds of that was going on with that. And they had it toward the legislature did not have to divulge what they were doing. They could pick and choose what they what they had to tell you. They didn't have to tell you. So that's, that's the Gestapo. That's the Gestapo. Yeah. It's, you know, it's the Nazi secret police. But this goes back to what we're talking about as far as making your MC bulletproof, because if ever there was a time when you needed protection and a lot of, you know, if you're a civilian that, you know, rides your bike every Thursday to work because, you know, for whatever reason, eh, that's one thing. Um, and guess what? If somebody mistakes you, if you look too much, like if you went in weekend warriors who went to Harley and got you some vest that looks like it's a Harley vest, but it looks like it's a three piece patch. Guess what? You, you might catch a little heat. Um, but for those of us that it, it's like a real thing, yeah, we, we're dealing with something else. And uh, especially for those of us that's got a good tan and a patch, oh, Lord. But it's a good, another good reason to get involved with the COCs because uh, what the COCs do uh, comparable to ABATE, the difference is that the COCs are lots of different clubs who we put even the clubs that have issues with one another. You put your BS to the side so that we can work on making the communities better, but also making sure that we have protections in place so that we can ride our motorcycles, be free and help the folks that we want to help and be left the hell alone. Uh, the COC, and it's all over the United States. It's not just here, it's all over the United States. But um, which leads me to the next thing. The COCs are organized in the sense that uh, there's a, a, a the national version, if you will, of the COC. There's one called the NCOC, the National Council of Clubs, that's exclusively for motorcycle clubs. And there's INCOM, NCOM, which is a national coalition of motorcyclists. And that's motorcycle clubs, as well as motorcycle organizations, MROs, like ABATE, and the MRF, the Motorcycle Rights Foundation, and things like that. And these guys, they get together and, oops, uh, stand by one second. Hey, hello, and thank you for calling the Big Bone Yard. Uh, you got Big Bone One Percenter, and I'm just saying this because I actually know who this is. Is that you, Black Dragon? Oh, uh, stand by. I don't know why we're not hearing you. Hold on. Let me take a look, see, see what's going on. Hold on. Oh, stand by. What's going on here? Oh, okay. Where you at? Uh, oh, there you go. Okay. Hey, you back? Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, quit doing that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Were you knocking on the door and we didn't hear you? He's still trying to get them glasses tuned in. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. You might, I am, man. This shit is weird. Stand by one second. I look down on this part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling the Big Bone Yard. Uh, yeah, them trifogals. <laughs> Big Bone Focus Center. You got uh, Tate, you got Archbishop, and you got Black Dragon. Who's on the line with us? Wait, stand by. Hold on. Wait, once again, what the hell? Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> I know, right? Hold on. Let's see what's going on here. Make sure your uh, make sure your okay. Let's see if uh, Wi-Fi is on or your uh, Bluetooth is on. Let's see. I see the little thing spinning. Let's see. Hey, you there, person? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. Now we can hear you. All right. It's not. You... It, it's still spinning. All right. Well, hey, who, who's on the line? 
Oh, this is Black Dragon, the Midnight Ghost Rider. <laughs> hey, what's going on? It's the other Black Dragon. What's oh, on? no. Yeah, it's the other Black Dragon. My bad. I should have said the other That's Black right. Dragon. That's all right. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, Black Dragon, uh, uh, Midnight Ghost Rider. Hang on one second. Hey, if y'all are watching this show, you're still okay. watching, take a second, hit the like button. Uh, definitely hit the like button, make a comment, and definitely share this with whomever you want to know some good information. If they're a biker out there that you know and love, shoot them this show, let them check it out. But uh, hit the like button. If you didn't subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. But as you were saying, uh, on Midnight Ghost Rider, what you got to say, brother? Oh, man, I, I don't mean to get off uh, get off of what y'all talking about, the subject y'all talking about right now, but I heard you, you, y'all doing the movie, man. That's, hey, that's wonderful, man. I'm glad to hear that, man. Hey, that's, 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 that's good stuff, man. And, and number two, I, I was trying to, I was trying to text. My texting ain't too good, but I was just messing with you talking about them aliens that came in, uh, the <laughs> Miami at the mall or shit, trying to prospect <laughs> with you. Right on, right on. <laughs> hey, what's up, boys. Archbishop in the house? What up, bro? Archbishop. <laughs> that's your, your Kimbo, yeah, ain't it? man. Right, what up, Kimbo? Yeah, hey, Doug West, <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> and it's cold in the motherfucker, but I don't care. I still ride my motherfucking bike. <laughs> yeah, Hell yeah. Yep, yep. yep. Put in the witch's tip. Drinking now. some motherfucking eggnog liquor. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to call and just say I love you, brothers, man, and just keep up the good work. And uh, and Black Dragon, if he's still on here, uh, I'm trying to send that song to him. I did for him and stuff. And uh, I just want to say what's up to you guys, man. Doing a great job, man. Keep it up for real. Right on, right on, man. We appreciate it, brother. Thanks for checking in with us. But you know, uh, but going back to the uh, to the income thing. So income, if you think about uh, a more inc- uh, a very inclusive organization. Speaking of which, Black Dragon, you are, uh, and I'll tell you all more about Incom and some of the stuff it does, but uh, one of the things that they do is they recognize bikers from all over the country that do different things. And Black Dragon, you are, I forget, what year was that? Was that 2021? You, well, you're a Silver Spoke Award recipient. 2020, no? yes. 2020, 20. 2020. There you go. Congratulations, sir. I know it's uh, you know about four years late, but uh, you know, or three and a half years late, but uh, yeah. So tell us about the silver, the, the silver award. Well, let me reach back here into the sky. Okay. And pull mine out. There we go. Yeah. Here we go. The uh, Incom Silver Spoke. I think I'm the like first black guy to get this. Here. I'm Let's pretty sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> so the. Uh, <laughs> Incom 2020, uh, I got this in a Silver Spoke Award uh, in appreciation for improving the image of motorcycling in the category of entertainment. I got this in 2020 during the middle of the, the uh, pandemic. I was uh, just so, uh, you know, uh, I went through so much, uh, especially that year uh, with the, the news channel and all that. And man, death threats, all kinds of stuff. So yeah. to be... To, to be able to, to be recognized by all the the big clubs out there, you know, you got to tell them who who's in a in in income and this kind of stuff they do. But uh, I was recognized with this, and I was so thankful to get it. And um, it's just uh, one hell of an accomplishment from a guy that started uh, with a cell phone, uh, yeah. walking around and talking. And uh, you know, some of the people <laughs> that, that have gotten this have been Jay Leno. Uh, yeah. Charleston Heston, you know, some of the the big time folks in the world. Hollywood got one from Insane Throttle in 2019, and mm-hmm. I got mine in 2020. So a recognition of uh, these channels, the YouTube channels, and uh, our uh, our contributions and uh, to the uh, to the lifestyle and improving the image of motorcycling. So it was yeah. really cool. And it's it's legitimately a big deal for for those folks. So I'm going to share with you about income because income just the history of it, uh, income started and in, what in the seventies. And this was during a time in which that is a beautiful award too, by the way, isn't it, but, um, isn't it? It, it is, it's absolutely gorgeous and it's, it's well-deserved and it is genuinely an honor. The income started uh, years ago when uh, the, the, the big, the big eight motorcycle clubs had finally figured out that they were spending a lot of time, energy and money, uh, trying to stay out of jail, 
then getting out of jail when they got in jail and then paying lawyers while they were in jail or getting put in jail. And they were making, uh, you know, judges busy and lawyers rich and the police busy. And, uh, and you know, you can't ride your motorcycle when you're locked up. So these fellas put their BS to the side and said, hey, let's sit down and figure some stuff out. And it started with a number of the, the largest clubs in the country. There are still some of the largest clubs in the country. And um, they got together and said, hey, what, if anything, can we do to stop all of this harassment? What, what can we do to make our situation better? That's what started. That was the idea that started Income and flash forward a number of years. So now Incom has sponsors and, and a lot of folks that from all over the United States to get together. But I'll read a little thing. Here, this is about income. It says uh, the National Coalition of Motorcycle of Motorcyclists was born on January the twentieth, or excuse me, January twenty seventh, nineteen eighty six. Officially, nineteen eighty six, uh, when motorcycle groups and their leaders from around the nation met in Las Vegas, spurred by the need for powerful unified voice to stand up for the rights of bikers everywhere. Since that time, income has continued to provide riders and motorcycle organizations with legal guidance, legislative backing, public awareness programs and anti-discrimination services amongst other resources. So INCOM is more than just a single organization. It's comprised of numerous motorcycle rights groups, clubs and associations all working together for the greater good of the biker community. So today the coalition has expanded to include hundreds of thousands of riders and more than, tw uh, more than 2000 member organizations from all over the United States. There's also groups outside the United States that are part of INCOM as well. Uh, and at its core, INCOM is an association built and run by bikers for bikers. It's, uh, it's national council designed to facilitate effective communication nationwide is comprised of one member from each participating organization. Motorcycle rights leaders representing 11 regions make up its board of advisors, which I'm one of them. Uh, the group also contains a legislative task force that includes state legislators, advocates, and a U.S. senator. So unlike with other organizations, groups can join INCOM at no cost, gaining access to its tools and resource and, and resources. INCOM does not um, does not impose membership fees or ask its members for funding. Instead, 100% of the organization's monetary backing is provided by the AIM, the Aid to Injured Motorcyclist Program and its associated network of motorcycle injury lawyers. Each AIM attorney gives a significant percentage of their legal fees from motorcycle accident cases to income, ensuring that the coalition can continue in its work. So no matter what type of bike you ride or patch you wear, all motorcycle groups are encouraged to join the National Coalition of Motorcyclists. If your group would like more information on becoming a part of income, get at me and I'll get you squared away. Uh, there's a convention uh, in Kansas City in uh, uh, this year, Mother's Day weekend, where there's a big convention. So if your club is not uh, a member of INCOM now, figure out how to become a member of INCOM before that convention so you can go there and network when you go to these conventions, there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of breakout sessions where people get together and teach you different stuff. There, uh, Jerry T, um, our attorney, uh, did a fantastic. He's also a, a, an award recipient with uh, with Incom, but he does a Rico seminar all about uh, how Rico affects motorcycle clubs and what to do to keep from getting hit with Rico charges and all that kind of thing. But uh, there's all kinds of different classes, stuff that you want to know. Everything from how to be a better sergeant at arms, how legislative stuff that you need to know, uh, and just regular riding from point A to point B type stuff. It's a lot of stuff there. <clears throat> that AIM program that I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, if you're a motorcycle club, you're a member of the COC or INCOM, you're having an event, uh, you're running a little shorter. Even if you're not, guess what? They're going to give you some money to help you with your event. And they call it the flyer program. But, you know. If you need flyers, great. If you need some other stuff, that's fine too. But they are there to help your organization, your club. Uh, so that's that's what uh, that's what's going on uh, with Incom. So and they have that yearly meeting. Tell them about that yearly. Um, yeah. Um, so yearly meeting. Incom. Uh, I that was I kind of alluded to it a little bit. So the next one is in Kansas City and uh, Mother's Day weekend. Uh, but that that meeting is a every year thing. And it's sort of like uh, it's sort of like if, if you're if you're some black folks and you've been to the proc, think about the proc uh, for everybody that's not at this. <laughs> think about the proc for all the clubs that's not at the proc. That's what that is. Um, but um, 
But uh, see, I, 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 how you say it? I, I uh, made it all PC. So it's a lot of white folks, but it's a lot of <laughs> other folks too, right? Right. Uh, it really is. Uh, but what happens there is you're gonna uh, there's there's dinners, there's meetings, there's uh, always bikers. So it's always education. Be a, party, a lot of education stuff that you need to know. A lot of times, stuff that you didn't even know you needed to know. You're gonna hear from politicians. You're gonna hear from uh, from bikers and very high standing. In their in their respective clubs, you're gonna see a shit ton of one percenters there, and guess what? Everybody's cool because they ain't there for the for the they ain't there for the smoke. You know, they're there for the business. But you're gonna see uh, all the all the one percenter clubs. Yeah, all those clubs that you heard about on TV that you never seen in real life go to Incom. They're gonna be there. You know, everybody except for Sons of Anarchy. They never come for some reason. I don't know why. The Mayans either. They don't want to yeah. show up. The Mayans. <laughs> the Mayans are racist, so that's why the Mayans don't come. But uh, you're going to see all of those other ones, all the different colors that we talk about. You're going to see them uh, at Encom. More importantly, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to network, which is a big part of what happens at Encom. Uh, in fact, speaking of which, um, I uh, alluded to it a little earlier, the PROC. Uh, the PROC started off as, matter of fact, I wrote up a thing. Where is that thing? Um, so the PROC, uh, let me see. All right, I can't find it. But anyway, so it's their 20 the year anniversary. They started 20 years ago. Yeah, they started 20 years ago. And in fact, the, the reason I get a huge kick out of the proc. Um, so 20 years ago, a bunch of bikers in the Northeast actually uh, got together in uh, in Philadelphia, uh, about a, uh, just right at 100 folks. They got together and they those uh, members of those various urban motorcycle clubs, as they call them. Oh, wait, here's my notes. I see it right here. But um, those members of those urban motorcycle clubs were called PROs. So for those of y'all that don't know what a PRO is, that's a public relations officer. So uh, a lot of times the uh, social clubs and uh, sport bike clubs and the, the clubs in the city, they had somebody who their job was to make sure that they knew what was going on on the set. If there was a party going on, they knew the details of it. If they had something going on, their job was to make sure everybody else knew about it. They organized their schedules so that this club didn't conflict with that club. And that's what PROs did. That was their job. So these PROs got together. And when they did, you talk about that in there? OK, right. There's yeah, a book right. for that. <laughs> There's a book for that. The PRO book, yes. <laughs> i tell you what. Oh, wait, here, I found what I wrote out about it. So here's the, the history of the PROC. So in 2004, some PROs from all from uh, a few urban motorcycle clubs from all over the northeastern U.S. had a small gathering at a bar in Philadelphia. Uh, there was about 100, 100 or so bikers at this one day, this one day, which is funny when we say this now, but at this one day gathering. Uh, they exchanged ideas, history and protocol as they understood it from their individual areas. Now, in true biker fashion, they had a hell of a good time and decided to do it again. The next year's get together was in the DMV, you know, around uh, Virginia, Maryland, DC uh, area. But um, but this time it was a three day weekend that offered substantial information that these uh, that these PROs could take back to their respective clubs and chapters. The gathering quickly became something that everybody was looking forward to, and it started growing. So, since 2004, this gathering became known as the PRO convention. Over the years, the PRO convention went from around 100 or so bikers to over 4,000 bikers in attendance each year. So instead of just exchange, exchanging business cards, stories, and ideas, this became a gathering that encompassed everything from, from the inception of a club, how to start a motorcycle club the right way, or to dissolve a club, uh, safety clinics, club officer breakout sessions, big time guest speakers like Black Dragon and a huge, uh, huge biker parties and big time sponsors like Polaris and Harley Davidson and Geico and more. Uh, bikers in the know often referred to this as the income for bikers with a tan. A few years ago, the PRO uh, rebranded re itself as the MC Professional Convention also known as the proc. So if you don't know, now you know, and you definitely want to go to that well, thing. Old timers still call it the pro. I still call it uh, the pro. And uh, they they called it the proc. They changed it to the proc because more than just PROs were coming. Uh, interesting thing about PROs specifically is that something else like social clubs that you're going to find mostly on the black biker set. Yeah, yeah. Typically, the PRO's job is handled by a secretary, in uh, in in on the white side or more traditional. 
the thing that the thing that changed that uh, was this Black Dragon because I remember I was a speaker in uh, in uh, 2010, and we had a saying in Florida. We used to say every chapter president is uh, is the default PRO, so it didn't matter what your job was. If you if you were the chapter president, your ass was a PRO. You yep. was the one. You was the face of the club. You was interacting. You was you're supposed to be in the know. So what happened with with the uh, with the pro convention was when they'd say, "Hey, PROs, come on out." You had a shit ton of chapter presidents who were going, especially those clubs that didn't actually have a designated PRO. So what happens when a chapter president goes to an event? Well, he ain't going by himself. So a lot of times his whole damn chapter might be 15, might be 20, might be three or four, but his whole chapter is going with him. President's going out of town to Kansas or to Atlanta or freaking Kentucky, wherever he's going. So everybody's going with him. So this thing grew and grew and grew and grew. And now it's- You know, you said 4,000. I remember the Atlanta one had 10,000 people here. Oh yeah. So Shit. yeah. Last year, well, you, you remember last year, damn last and, year. Uh, you, you were there last year. I was there. Yeah. I'll be speaking at the pro this year. Um, so this will be my, uh, I think my oh, third year. or fourth time back, huh? Your umpteenth year going. <laughs> yeah, this will be my third or fourth time I spoke. Now, Frequent I will flyer miles. the PRO. Yeah, right. uh, I wrote the book, The PRO's Bible, uh, in about 2017, about maybe like the second or third time I spoke there. Mm. And uh, it was to illustrate the actual, the job of the PRO. Because back then, a lot of folks thought the PRO was was the party person that was supposed to mm -hmm. be explaining to everybody where all the parties were. Yep. And so I had to find out, you know, what this guy should actually, or gal should actually be doing as a person who managed the public, so the motorcycle club, right. managed the, the, the whole public relations of the MC. Uh, so we talked about everything about how to do press releases and pressers and media right. junkets. We talked about all of that in that book. Um, and you know, the thing I want to point out about the PRO specifically is that the PRO is what gave Black Dragon his uh, national launch as a national speaker. Because yeah. it was it was there. That was the first national audience I had. And, and they don't let there, me forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, Black Dragon Biker TV exploded, uh, right. uh, which it was it was called Black Dragon National President then. But it, uh, it exploded because of, uh, of of the exposure that I got there. So I'm always, always very um, 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 idealistic or kind of like, you know, dreamy when I talk about the pro because the first time I ever spoke there, I'm facing this thousand people or something. And, uh, you know, I'm talking. I was a keynote speaker. And uh, everybody was looking at me, waiting for me to say something. And when I got done, I got a standing ovation. And it was my first time in front of a, that huge audience like that. So uh, there's everything. Education, knowledge. They bring in people. They bring in, uh, like they've got a, an attorney there. Nolan Ryan is going to be speaking yep. this year. And he'll be talking about 501 uh, 501C3s and C7s. C3s and C7s. Yes, yep. thank you. Um, and all about how to, you know, we're talking about your motorcycle club winning in 2024. He's going to tell you how to set up your motorcycle club to win uh, by uh, how the different kind of ways you can set up your, your nonprofit and, yep. and the advantages of each. And just all this information. Oh man, you, know, you pay. I think you pay like sixty five dollars or something uh, yep. for it. Now it's three or three days long, is it? Third, yeah, Thursday, it's Friday, uh, Saturday. If if you're uh, if if you're attending, it's uh, Friday, Saturday uh, with the Sunday morning wrap up type of stuff. Uh, if you're if you're speaking or or some of that stuff, then it's it, it's a legit three days because you're doing stuff that first day, like Thursday night uh friday friday's a saturday's the biggest day but here's the thing if you've not been to the pro make it your business to go uh you you, you will not be disappointed uh not to mention that if your club if your club is not involved with the pro because the pro is different than uh than income in the sense that you don't have to be a member uh whereas with the pro you can just show up you can just show up and you'll you, it'll be worth your time and your effort i'll tell you what the crowd is different these people it's like it's like uh going to the giggles comedy club if you're a comedian 
Giggles Comedy Club versus going to the Apollo, right? Because at Giggles, you know, you might tell a couple of dry jokes and the people are polite and they'll just like this at the end. At the pro, if you fucking up, you're going to know immediately. But by the same token, so uh, at, I spoke at the, at, the, at the pro last year and got a standing ovation. And I, I'd gotten standing ovations before, but that one, I mean, not, nothing against nobody else, but that one meant some shit because that's a hard crowd. That's a hard crowd. That's you know, like uh, being at the Apollo, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> it's like, like being Apollo, at the Apollo. Because <laughs> these cats will call your ass out while you're on this damn stage and um and fuck around and say the wrong thing, somebody might come and talk to you. You know, it's, it's a different vibe, you know. But um, and I don't mean to scare nobody, I'm just saying it's where real bikers from I'm talking there's 99ers there, there's Christian clubs there, uh, there's uh, that big, uh, the big uh, one percenters out of Texas, uh, they were there uh, last year. I didn't even know they were there. I was at a, a income meeting and they were telling me, yeah, we were there. I was like, oh, damn. And a few people confirmed, yeah, dude, their whole damn Houston chapter was there. I'm like, damn. <laughs> but apparently Houston uh, Houston goes to uh, New Orleans. It was in New Orleans. So, yeah, they, they rode through and showed up. And uh, apparently they, but it's thousands of people there. So there's folks that could be there and you not even know they was there. The only reason I've ran in the dragon is because a he had a giant dog with him, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that made it easy. And uh, also, uh, uh, dragon had his uh, had a, a actual stand that was there, and uh, you know who profit profit was there. Uh, just important people in the MC community go to the proc, and now uh, which leads me to the next thing, which I'm really glad about is your club needs to win in 2024. You want to make your club bulletproof. Do what these big organizations are doing right now, and that's this. You got the proc getting with income. You got income getting with the proc. You got Abate fucking with the MROs and the MRFs, and you got Abate going to the proc, and you got yeah, – so everybody in 2024 is getting on the same page. We're all singing the same song from the same sheet of music, which is we're looking at this as a us-against-them situation, as in these bikers – us bikers throughout the United States have got to we, we this is the time to come up because the world's gone crazy. The government is not necessarily on our side. The police want to put us in jail. Uh, the laws are getting ridiculous. Politics are getting ridiculous. So it's a us against them thing. Not we're not against the country, but we are for us. And the more the merrier. You know, like there's safety in numbers, there's strength in numbers. So if you got thousands of people who fuck with the proc and thousands of people who fuck with income and thousands of people in Abate and so on and so on. So if you're not, if your club is not plugged in, it's like if half the stuff we're talking about tonight, if you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, make it your business to learn. If you don't know shit about the COC in your area, hit me up. Hit up Dragon, hit up Archbishop, hit up Tate. One of the four of us or all of us can make sure that you know what you need to know so that your club can get plugged in, you know, or your group. You don't have to be a club. You might be an MRO. You might be some fellas and shit. Because guess what? You don't have to be in a club to join Abate or to go to Incom or, 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 or to go to the proc, rather. You know, you, can, you don't have to be in a club for those things. But if you are in a club, you damn sure ought to be plugged in. If that makes sense, did I, oh, did yeah. I say that right, Bishop? Absolutely. So I'm telling y'all, y'all get plugged in. So you want to win, and I, I don't know if y'all was expecting tonight's show to be like the, the the silver bullet in the the code the code the secret launch codes and all like that. But yo, we just gave it to you. The thing is, get organized, get your club plugged in. The best way to know your community is to be involved in your community. So how do you do that? Get involved. In that council, get involved in ABATE, get involved in income, all of that stuff. Get plugged in, networking, you know, because information is power. What's that thing they used to say on the Saturday thing? You know, uh, so now you know. No, that's GI Joe. So now you know, and no one's half the battle. GI Joe, <laughs> like that. That's what we're talking about. But yeah, but uh, but that's what the secret is for 2024. Uh, as far as your club, if you're a motorcyclist, this is what you want to do. And um, remember. If Black Dragon said it, don't believe that shit. <laughs> Just kidding. Yo, but tell us more about your uh, about your book, though, Dragon. Because you gave us a few tidbits here and there. So one, how can we get it? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, blackdragonsgear.com, blackdragonsgear.com, or you can get it uh, at, on Amazon and uh, Kindle, and the audio book will be done in about another week, uh, and you'll be able to get it on Audible. But you can get your autograph copies from blackdragonsgear.com. Uh, it's in a hardcover, uh, which is really kind of pricey. Uh, the uh, and it's in a soft cover and it's in a Kindle and, and this is um uh, you know this is my latest work uh, I'm really proud of it uh, about eighty five thousand words three hundred fifty two pages there's a hundred and eighty nine question test in the back like um, so you can test your knowledge and this is for a female who comes onto the biker set uh, in a social club and what's a nomad. What, what what's a president? What what's a what's a what's a sergeant at arms? What's a road captain? Uh, wh where do motorcycle clubs come from? What's a what is a one percenter motorcycle? What's an outlaw motorcycle club? What's a diamond? You know what what are any of these things? What's a these are great questions. What what's income? What's a what's a coalition? What what's a blessing? Uh, so all of those questions are answered for you, so that when you're done with this, you know enough just about enough to be dangerous to. Now you know enough to go find out something, but uh, you know how, how do you meet? How do you meet and greet people? How do you how do you greet a one percenter first, for, for instance? How do you greet a? Uh, 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 how do you greet somebody? What what's so significant about the patches? What questions do you ask somebody? What do you not ask somebody? Do do, do you you know all these kinds of things that you might not know? Uh, and then it talks about uh, so you, you you get a good history of motorcycle clubs. I even talk about where the motorcycle came from. And, and you know, these are motorcycle clubs. We're wrapped around motorcycles. Where do motorcycles come from? When did they first hit the country? Where do motorcycle clubs come from? When did they first start? How did they get started? Right. Uh, we're talking about everything from uh, uh, the, Ho uh, the Hol Hollister riot to, uh, yeah. to, to uh, the, 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 the uh, club wars of the 70s and 80s. And Allegedly. everything, you know, we, then, so it's a, uh, this is going to give a person that that doesn't have much knowledge or a person that that has been in it a while but doesn't know a lot of things like a lot of mm -hmm. folks will will know what some of the terms mean they don't know where they came from and they don't know right. why they're around there's some things about mc protocol you may or may not know then we talk right. about social protocol and then of course as i said in the beginning we talk about the entire history of the social club movements uh, Sojourner Truth, uh, uh, Mother Moses, uh, all of these ladies were actually in social clubs that did all of the things that we see these social clubs doing today. And that's why they're very important in our community and in our motorcycle communities. You have to know where you came from. You got to know the history of what you're doing to know where you should be going and what direction to be going. And, and, and we talk about everything from the brother club that 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 uh, you may have to, you know, some of these clubs and the social clubs and some of these areas have to have a brother club before they can get on the set. So we talk about brother clubs. We talk about being support clubs, social clubs, support clubs, all this stuff, all covered in here, man. Right on. Right on. All right. Well, man, I'll tell you what, that's that's good stuff. So y'all reach out to Black Dragon and um, let me make sure I said it properly. It is. Uh, blackdragonsgear.com or yeah, black dragons like plural, right? Blackdragonsgear.com. Uh, so you can you can get the book from that from that site, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Blackdragonsgear.com. All right. Outstanding. So definitely. And Amazon and Kindle. Out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you have uh, the, the audio as well as the hardback. The audio will be out in about a week. I'm still working on the audio, but um, it's really cool. Um. I've got the uh, I've got the audio up. Uh, uh, it's really cool that working on it right here in my studio. So uh, it'll be my second audio book. Man, we're talking 15, 16 hours a day in this damn thing. I'm tired. My my hardback is just all my needs is a signature. You know, like an autograph. I'll I'll, I'll pick that up for me. Yeah, I yeah, I'll have that for you at the at the. At the hey, I will. Hey, these will be on sale at the Proc. So if you're at the Proc. Uh, bring your money because these will be on sale. I have these. Um, I just got them delivered a couple of days ago, so I will be. I will have a booth at the Proc, and I will be selling books. All of my books: uh, Prospects Bible, uh, President's Bible, 
public relations officers bible sergeant at arms bible they'll all be available uh and here the new pro bible i mean the new uh uh social coach bible all available for you well i want to talk about the book that um that i wrote which is um in my head and um <laughs> i lost my i had a number two pencil and um th then some things happened um but yeah so you know what? I'm not going to talk about my book because you know it's a fictitious. We need, we need to get together and write it. Man. No, for real though. You know what? Uh, that is a thing. You've been telling me that for three years, and um, yeah, no, longer than that. Yeah, about about three, four years. You've been telling me that, and I think ultimately if I need anybody to do it out there that wants to write a book, I and, and you're in the biker set or whatever. I'll publish it for you. I, I I'm looking for all writers. We will publish that book. And uh, I, I don't, I want every, listen, everybody's got something to share. Archbishop has a book in him. Yeah, um, and on, on how to almost have a beard as cool as mine. <laughs> um, you know, you go, you're going to have to you know, get a few more years on you, bro. I see what you're trying to do here. I see what you're trying to do. Uh, but, you know, everybody's got a book in them. And um, it's going to, uh, I, I want to put all biker books, especially any biker books that bring education or experience or positivity onto the set, man. Um, I'm on my eighth now, so I'm I'm ready. I'll publish your book and we'll make it happen, man. Right on. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, that's definitely, and I'm not teasing, I'm going to get at you about that book, uh, like, we'll like soon. And um, Dagon, um, the thing is, I've actually been working on one. I've been working on one. All right. Yeah. I got about I got about 20, 25 pages in right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. That's what's up. Hey, the, you know, when if you come to me, I, I will give you the formula to write, and I send you text messages and stuff, and put you on the on the uh, program. But really, putting a book out is just a matter of how many words am I going to write every day. For me, I write about uh, between between like five and ten thousand words a day. When I'm gonna when I'm gonna stick a book out? Are you um, using that program that I that uh that uh, it wasn't Dragon Speak? It was the other one. Uh, are you using that program I gave you? Uh, no, I I use um if I'm gonna speak now. Luckily for me, I type somewhere uh, north of like 240 words a minute. Okay. But sometimes I get tired. I I can speak as fast as I can think. I can type as fast as I can think, or as most people can speak. Okay. Uh, but when I get tired, I use um. Word, Microsoft Word. That's the one a, I told you about. That's okay, the one. that's the one I use. Yeah, I use Word. And You're what did welcome. you tell me about that? Three or four years ago? Yeah, that was, that was me. I remember, because yeah. I told you, you said there's not a thing, and I said, yeah, it is, and here's how to do it. And da, 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 da. Yeah, you I've been using that ever since. I, I use yeah. that sometimes. It's really easy. And the world was born, comma yesterday. Uh, it's my colon. Or you can say scratch that. The world was born, comma yesterday, and I really liked it. Period. New line. Yeah. And so, therefore, I had a great time, period. And you guys will love what I did, period. New paragraph. And it's just like that. It's just yep. flows, man. I told you. I told you, which sucks because <laughs> I haven't written not one word for purposes but, of the day. problem is if you're so a, a typer, the, <laughs> the, the problem is if you're a typer, it's a yeah. whole new mindset to now yeah. jump into a speaker and then go back and forth. It can be kind of a pain. Once you get used to it, it's like everything, man. You just talk. Yeah, and that that thing. Uh, the only thing is, is it, it misspells words in a different way. Mm. It's it's spelled right, but it is the wrong synonym. Right. <laughs> so, the, you know, it's T H E R E instead of T H I E R. You know, I so. use it. I use it, but I use it for business stuff. I don't. I, d I haven't written one word of this potential book that we've been talking about. But I I actually use it all the time. Just not for just not for that. But I'm. I'm going to break down and just go ahead and do it one day. So, Tate, what's your book going to be about? <laughs> I ain't no book in me. I ain't got the patience to sit down and read or write a book. All right, I'll so you got to get a ghostwriter. Get a ghostwriter. Look, hey, I, I know a pretty good one. He's got eight books out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'll tell you what. I'm going to tell you all right now. Tate does have a book in him, and I'll tell you why. Tate comes from a very impressive family. He, he is a, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, a legacy as it relates to Abate. Pretty much everybody that shares your DNA has been a member of Abate and been an officer or a president, a vice president, a sergeant, pretty much everything that there is to be in Abate. Your family members have been that. 
uh, which of course is not saying that that you inherited your position, but you were groomed for it for sure. Oh. And you were groomed for it. You're the youngest president of Abate that in the state of Florida, I know, possibly yeah. in the country, and just so happens to be the largest damn chapter in the state of friggin' Florida. And the, and you've been doing that for quite a long time. There's no way that you don't have a story to tell. Because just if I didn't know anything else about you and I just knew that, I'd want to know more. And I think the wanting to know more part is what's necessary to to sell a book, not necessarily to write it, but it's definitely that's a definite a definite key element in having a book be marketable. So so yeah, I think there's a book there. There's definitely a book there. I might sit down one day. <laughs> Who was laughing? Who was laughing? Oh, ouch. <laughs> oh, hey, so that, was that was the wife. <laughs> the wife said, I think I did I hear your wife say, get the fuck out of here? Is that what she just said? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, ouch. All right. I'd All have right. to be home long enough to do that. <laughs> I hear you. Well, hey, look, so uh one more thing. So Archbishop, uh, as y'all uh, may know, Archbishop has kicked off in a fantastic way, uh, the okay. diamond effect. Uh, and it's an excellent show. Um, uh, my gorgeous ass is going to be back on, uh, very soon. I missed the last episode cause of all, all kinds of miscellaneous stuff, but, um, we started that show or he, it's his show. He started that show and, uh, and it's excellent. Uh, the ratings, I mean, for lack of a better, I say ratings, but you know, the feedback is strong as all hell. People are liking this show. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't checked out, uh, the Diamond Effect. Take some time out of your life and do that. Let me shut up for a minute. AB, tell us about the Diamond Effect. Well, well, first let me say before I get into that, since since Black Dragon was selling shit, I'm gonna let y'all know I'm selling I'm selling incense and edges. <laughs> incense and edges for being the prop, selling incense and edges. So if you need incense, but your shit ain't right. Come holler. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's what's up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, some serious shit, though. Yes, we've been um, on the Diamond Effect. Yes, it's been. Um, I'm actually amazed how quick, how quick it's growing. Uh, we've been putting out some good, some good stuff. You know, me, Big Bone, my boy Mike Ball. We've been, we've been really putting out some good stuff here. Um, I've been trying to. The focus on that show is to put out stuff that mainstream media is not going to tell you about. And a lot of this, a lot of the stuff. If you watch the show, then you realize a lot of the stuff that, that we're putting out there. Like you had no idea that this was, this was even going on, you know. And um, it's a lot of stuff that you need to know, not just because you know us as a motorcycle community. You know, we all sit together as you know in certain in certain aspects. But this is something that it goes beyond the motorcycle set. It goes beyond the political scene, it goes beyond the color boundaries. This is, this is us as a people. And a lot of stuff that we, we putting out there is focused on that. Um, this week on uh, Wednesday, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to have Anthony, uh, from, uh, King Tones Army. He, this month, January is, uh, is human trafficking awareness month. And, uh, we're going to have him on there. He's, he's one of them guys that's out there, um, holding the line. You know his his group. They go and they they bust in hotel rooms and all kind of stuff, getting these kids out of there that's been abducted and you know been been out trafficking. And you know um, one of the uh, one of the things is if you may not have noticed, but in Cleveland, Ohio, this uh, in the year two thousand twenty three, from January to September, they had over a thousand teenagers, girls, that disappeared. And nobody knows where they at. Now, when they when they wrote about it, they wrote an article about this big. They talked about it for one day, and the police said, "Well, you know, it, it may not be over a thousand because you know a couple of them ran away a couple other times, and we had to make reports on them a couple other times. But most of these kids that's disappearing are black, Latino, and indigenous, and." You know, you you do have Caucasian girls that's been abducted, but they're in the black neighborhoods and the poor neighborhoods in Cleveland, so they don't give a shit. These kids are disappearing. You know, and you know, just like in Detroit, uh, you mm -hmm. 
close to the lake or whatever. They putting them kids and they shipping them kids off. Before you know it, they they gone, and you and you don't you don't see these kids again. Yep. You know? I was gonna say when um we covered we did a two part show. Uh, you remember last year on uh, the yep. big boneyard, we did this two part show about human trafficking, and one of the things that we learned was that a lot of the people that are human trafficked. Uh, first of all, they're not all foreigners. That, that's a misconception. These are our own kids um, and, and women and, and boys that are getting trafficked. And if it's a port city, if there's, if there's a port, if there's some water near wh- where you are, oh, yeah. chances are there's trafficking going on. And one of the big things that we were doing was telling people and teaching people what to look out for. And we got some great results, as in people getting back with us saying, hey, here's what we found out. And we they the police recovered so and so or these just regular folks some bikers got together and found some folks recovered some people so so that's the sort of thing that uh you're going to find on a diamond effect that i think is really good so while it's not a, a biker show it is a human show so it don't matter whether you ride a bike or drive a car or freaking fly a damn kite if you're if you're a human if you're an american it's good stuff on there for you to learn it's definitely good stuff so and uh you know this this is definitely going to be it's it's the place to be so you definitely want to plug in tune in and check it out and um you know and learn some stuff you know and don't be shy to call in interact make comments all of that it's it's going to be definitely an, a good experience for you there's no doubt about that but um and the other thing is is uh after careful thought and consideration we did decide here at the big boneyard that um that Tate is not qualified to write a, a book uh his wife is uh, adamant oh, yeah. that she does not want to be embarrassed. Uh, so, so there's that. But um, well, it's a good so, thing I'll have a ghostwriter. <laughs> yeah, you, you got you got a good one. You got a good one. But I tell y'all what. Uh, so uh, on the uh, so as far as the self promotion, I'll share a little bit. Uh, so the big boneyard definitely. If anybody wants to help us out, because uh, this year in 2024, we're definitely going to be uh, leveling up quite a bit. Uh, we're going to be on the road going to some different places, doing some different things. So if you want to support the channel, definitely please do. Uh, you can do the uh, Cash App as always. That, that's always up and available. But uh, as far as uh, some of the products, uh, for those of y'all that saw a while back, we showed uh, the uh, the outfit with the, the real pretty girl that was uh, that was modeling the thing in a video. It's on the Big Boneyard Facebook page. But we've got the T-shirts, the, the little uh, V-neck shirts for the girls and the shorts and all kinds of miscellaneous gear. If y'all want some of that, or if you want to make a donation to the Big Boneyard, just uh, send either um, either email or, or text uh, to the Big Boneyard's phone number. Uh, you can send your phone number or your email, and I'll send you a link where you can donate some money or you can buy a product and tell me what you want. I'll send you whatever it is, let you choose, and ultimately we'll have a proper website and all that kind of stuff. But, but all that good shit is coming. But um, other than that, um, I know we've been... Uh, going at it for an hour and 28 minutes exactly. And um, and I think this has been a hell of a good show. I hope everybody got something out of it. And um, But other than that, um, I'm pretty sure that we're going to be doing this again in about... All right, y'all know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say seven days. And by the way, this is the first show uh, that we did where we didn't do a disclaimer, but fortunately we didn't need it. But uh, AB, should we do a disclaimer anyway? Nah, hell, we'll be yeah, yeah. Yeah, we already missed it. But, yo, uh, I thought about that. Uh, Tate told me, hey, man, you missed this camera. <laughs> but, uh, fortunately, we didn't talk about anything. That was, Catch you know. it, they missed it. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yo, but I tell you all what, if, uh, if anybody wants any information about income, about ABATE, about the COC, definitely reach out, get at me. I got you because uh, you definitely, your organization should definitely be a part of one of those organizations because it's that's that's the way you're going to win in 2024. Um, so I want to take a minute and say, Tate, uh, brother, thank you for being here. Black Dragon, no as always, it's always a pleasure. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedule to fuck around with us over here at the Big Boneyard. AB, use the bestest. I don't care what Todd J just said. All right, I made that up. Todd J didn't say nothing bad. I'm try, trying to start some shit. Other than that, we're going to see y'all back in about seven days. And thank y'all very much for joining us here on The Big Bone Yard. Y'all have a great night. I decided to pursue a career in law because it gives me an opportunity to help people. When a client chooses us to represent them, they're entrusting us with a huge responsibility. It's our goal to exceed their expectations with our personalized service. 
and to help them to achieve the best possible recovery to compensate them for their injuries. That's where we come in. We come in and we solve that problem for them and uh, really set them on the right track in order to try and get back to what their life was like before the accident happened.